connection to source, this connection to consciousness through life force. I'm going to get off peace now, but, you know, when we talk about siphoning, when we talk about alien races, when we talk about the dark ones, you know, all of the dark forces wanting to steal our life force because they don't have that connection to God. They don't have it. They don't have the ability to receive this prana. And that's why they tried to steal it from us. So this prana will come in and it gives us life. It gives us vitality. It gives us energy. It feeds our minds. It feeds our bodies. But it also gives us information about what's out there. And it gives us inspiration as well. So if you're wondering where your thoughts come from, your thoughts come from the electromagnetism that is swimming around and the prana that is here in our universe. That's where thoughts come from. That's why I say when you meditate, if your objective is to try and clear your thoughts, well, you're setting yourself up for failure because by the mere fact of breathing, you are breathing in thinking. You are breathing in in your inhaling information and inspiration. It comes in. So this is how we receive the information from our higher selves, from the universe, from wherever, through the breath. And this is why the breath is the bridge between you and your divinity. So all of this electromagnetism holds the prana. When the prana, when this electromagnetism comes into our world, into our atmosphere, the prana needs to get into us somehow. It's like, I need, I need to, you. So what it does is, is it, it's, it attaches itself to oxygen molecules very, very high up in our atmosphere. And then as the oxygen molecules come down into the realms of where we can receive it, we do actually lose quite a bit of this prana, but it's still attached to the oxygen molecules. It's like a virus that needs to get inside of you. <laughs> and so we breathe the oxygen in, right? Now, there, there are two ways in which we can take an inhale, through our nose and through our mouth. I highly advise that you always breathe in through your nose. I also advise that you breathe out through your nose. And there are some breathing techniques that will require you to breathe out through your mouth. But otherwise, always in, out, through the nose. You will be more intelligent and teach your children to breathe in and out through the nose as well. Because they will be more intelligent if they do. And this is why. We breathe in the oxygen through our nostrils. Now, in here, behind your third eye, there is an organ called the olfactory bulb. And the olfactory bulb has a number of roles, a number of jobs that it needs to do. One of them is it separates the oxygen and the prana and the energy. It plucks them apart. So when we breathe, it comes in, processes through the oxygen molecules, process through the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb splits the oxygen and the pr uh, prana separate. The oxygen then goes down into our lungs, which is then transported around our body to feed our bodies, our muscles, our organs, our tendons and everything. And the prana goes into our brains, into our minds and feeds our vitality and our energy and our creativity and our aliveness. So it splits and they go like this. This energy, the prana, also comes down through our neurological system into our chakras. So breathing also balances your energy in your chakras. And... When we do breath work, we can change the amount of where that energy sits in our chakras. So if you have a depletion in the heart area, there are certain breathing techniques that you can do to force that prana into the heart area to, to balance that energy, 